hello 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 first video of the new year i'm super excited that we're all still here right right um this will be my ufc fight night seven fight island and uh before we get into that real quick since this is my first video of the brand new year i just want to take a little time out to give some sort of statement <laughs> to make us make a statement um so yeah what are we 13 days into this sucker and it looks like it's gonna be just as crazy as 2020 <laughs> so we've had more stuff happen in like the last two weeks than we've had in like the last three months of 2020 so just a real quick about what my little journey I've kind of touched on it a bit um, I was working for a casino and so I was furloughed when the whole quarantine thing started happening and then um, I'm in California so as the lockdown persisted I just recently got completely let go <laughs> So, but don't worry about it. They said once the casino opens up back again, I can apply to get my job back. Whether or not I'll get it back, who knows? But honestly, I don't want to go back. But anyway, but that is where I'm at. And I was one of the more fortunate people as far as my unemployment actually being enough to pay for the essentials, rent, car note, insurance, phone, those sort of things. Although I am making hundreds of dollars less because they don't even factor in tips into what my unemployment was anyway so on tips alone I'm actually making hundreds less but still it was enough I didn't go hungry um, and it this was the first time in my 30s this was the first time in my life honestly as someone who's been working six days a week 10 12 hour days sometimes 14 hour days been working pretty hard since I was 14 years old this was actually the first time in my life that I got to stop and like soul search I guess I realized that's what I was doing I was doing all this reading I was doing affirmations I as you know I started the jewelry line that was last year but I hadn't really had a chance to even really research how to really work it promote it or anything like that I was working six days a week sometimes seven uh, mandatory overtime all of that and I would come home so tired that I wouldn't couldn't do anything to actually invest in myself whether it be financially or just mentally physically my health so this was the first time in my life all the way in my 30s now where I actually got a chance to like figure out a little bit of who I am now as a gr super grown adult right because when you're working those type of hours all the time all it is is work you're working towards your goal you're preparing for work you have no time to actually figure out well, what do I like How, am I happy I know I'm not happy why can we fix it not right now gotta go to work <laughs> so, and that's kind of how and, and those of you who follow me for a while you know I even went through a little homeless stint for about 18 months where I was living in my car and on people's uh, couches and things of that nature so needless to say it's been a little bit rough right been working real hard and seemingly not getting anywhere so for me this was like a godsend and I actually felt guilty even feeling that way from the beginning telling people like I'm happy this is the happiest I've ever been <laughs> and it was because I actually got like I said I started sleeping again because I was working nights and all of that and again working 10 12 hour days six days a week sometimes 14 hour days um schedule all over the place sometimes it was just crazy during tournament season um so my sleep schedule was all off whack I was basically surviving off of like three hours a day for years right um all of the the I aged more in like the last four years working at a casino than I have like in the last 14 it was crazy um my eating habits were all out of whack basically not really eating and then having like little sugar uh candy here and there to help give me the little sugar boost so I could get through the day things of that nature so not eating well um definitely not um um as far as like my spiritual being my mental health wasn't really reading because too tired trying to open a book too tired not reading not this um so I started doing all of that started reading I love movies I'm in California so we don't have theaters here open um, so not only have I been going through the watching movies online but I also um, started watching old movies movies that I've been meaning to see and haven't seen I started watching a lot more documentaries and started watch, uh, listening to a lot more lectures and things of that from scholars and all of that so I just started feeding my mind feeding my soul and then uh, feeding my temple taking care of my body I like to say I reclaimed my body I've been pushing myself in ways that not only have I never pushed myself when I was younger but never even thought to uh, I've, I've always been I thought in decent shape been in dance since I was young 
uh, added in the sports in junior high uh, so far. So uh, the can't even speak. I'm trying to get this concise. I know it's gonna be a long video. I don't want it to be. Uh, <laughs> so I've always like you know I, I've always had walking in there. I've always uh, sporadically used my gym pass, but I'm more of an outdoor person. So I was never like crazy out of shape, but. I realize your 30s is like the last decade for you to truly push yourself to where you can still be the actual best, right? Not the best for your age, but if you're in your 30s, even your late 30s, if you've taken care of yourself and hadn't had too many injuries, um, you've got the mental uh, experience on your hand, you can still get out there with the 22 year olds on the basketball courts and win a couple of games. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you're still able to achieve heights that no one can achieve in your 30s it's like for me i felt like this is my last decade left to really push myself to see what i can achieve and compete with those who are in their 20s and in their teens right um so that's what i did uh, i've never been a runner uh, i started in april just once a week and I, a couple of weeks ago i was like let me see how much i can run let me see where i'm at and i ran seven seven and a half miles and it was a break <laughs> i ran on the beach on the beach and um I ran four miles and then I was with my dog. I had to take a break. Oh, I got a dog during quarantine. Puppy, I'm one of those people, adopted a puppy. Half chihuahua, half beagle. Um, I, we stopped at the four mile mark for about three songs, had some water, and then ran three and a half back. And I actually, my lungs felt good, my heart felt good. It was just my legs. It was, it was my hips, my knees, my ankles. They were like, yeah, we need a rest. Seven and a half is enough. So I never in life thought that I could run seven and a half miles. I know to those of you who are really fit, you're like, that's it. But for me, I mean, I went from someone who like pretty much detested running to like that runner's high is real and it feels great. <laughs> and like achieving these new goals. And I did more than just the running. I've been doing Taibo. I've been I incorporated boxing for the first time and having my body move in different ways. I've been doing hip hop. I've been doing step. Like I just really wanted to push my body to move in different ways and to do things that quite frankly I'd never tried when I was younger. I want to do while I still had time to really be competitive and really push myself to those heights. Because as you get in your 40s and 50s and 60s, you can achieve those goals for your age and that's just what it is right it's just it for your age uh, some of us the they'll the they'll go into their 40s a little bit for the most part the 30s is kind of it as far as being able to still be the actual best 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 not the best for your age and so uh physically i lost 15 pounds as well in the uh course of doing this uh i mean california there's a thing called running canyon and that's like my, my goal i want to be able to run running canyon and um i was thinking i might be able to do walkathons but seeing as how i was able to run seven and a half miles with that small break in between i think i might be able to do like running marathons <laughs> Like, so that's the goal now. It ain't walkathons. I want to do a running marathon and run up Runyon Canyon and continue to push my weight, body to move in ways that I never thought that I could do. And so, um, since 2021 seems like it's going to be more of the same, all I can say is, ain't no safety net. <laughs> Something I've always told black folks, ain't no safety net. So you got to find that consistency, you got to find progress, you got to find a support system of your own and find a little happiness and joy where you can because the world going to do what it do. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too long. Let's go ahead and get through these predictions. Uh, UFC Fight Night Fight Island uh, 7. I'm choosing, apologize for this right off the bat, uh, Dusko Tudorovic oh, to beat <laughs> Puneli uh, Soriano. Choosing Joaquin Buckley, pretty sure I got that one right, to beat um, uh, Alessio Di Chirico. Ah! Choosing Santiago Ponsonibio, Bibio to beat Li Ji Jing Liang. Oh, Lord. Um, if you're like me, you've been watching Santiago. Boy, did he get injured at the absolute wrong, I don't know where I'm looking, at the absolute wrong time. He's actually been gone for two years, but he was on a six fight winning streak before that. Middleweight division that's actually pretty darn stacked. And a, a lot of us were like, 
does he have championship quality seems like he's got the personality the announcers were getting behind him seems like the organization was getting behind him and then boom injury so i actually i want to see him get back on track lee has also been growing he seems to measure his cardio better now he seems to just fight smarter period point blank lee fights smarter now so i think this will be a very competitive fight but i i'd like to see if santiago could get back on that path so we could really see if he's got that championship quality in him i believe I, I was believing that he did, and but now he's been out for two years. So anyway, p uh, picking Santiago. Now, co-main event, and we're seeing Carlos Condit versus Matt Brown. I can tell you this fight's going to be exciting. I don't know how it's going to go, but it's going to be exciting. Both of these men are probably in the winter of their careers, especially for their weight class. Um, uh, Matt Brown, 40. Carlos Condit, um, 36. They're both kind of the school of learning everything at once, although Carlos would say the guy jiu-jitsu or whatever Greg Jackson's uh, named his art, but it's basically training everything. You start, they both kind of started off with the wrestling. Well, no, not Matt Brown. Matt Brown actually just started off street fighting. You got to look at his personal story. He had his first fight with no experience at all. Won at second fight, same night. Did not win that third fight after like three sessions. A, a crazy way he got started. Um, but again, they're both from more of the school of we train everything. We train wrestling. We train uh, boxing. We train kicks. We train submissions. So, um, uh, uh, exciting fight. They both took some time out, had to come back, had to rediscover a love for fighting, had to get their bodies back on track and get give their bodies a break. Um, Carlos is coming off of a win, Matt's coming off of a loss. Uh, I, again, I don't know if this is gonna go all three rounds or not. You can see anything here. Here, They both are so well-rounded that they could fight ground against the cage. Um, I think Carlos Khan is going to be faster and he should fight in space where he is better. He has more tools, he has especially more kicks. I think he should tear apart Matt Brown's lead leg. Don't let him get started. Matt Brown's gonna wanna walk forward in straight lines, which he's good at. He's kinda like controlled chaos. I think he's gonna be a bit m I don't know if he's a bit more powerful because Carlos has that deceptive, deceptive power. Um, I've always thought that Carlos Condit was more skilled than Matt Brown. It's just kind of simple as that. And him being 36 as opposed to 40. And with Carlos, it seemed like mentally he checked out rather than his body not being able to withstand. And with Matt Brown, I think it's a little bit of the opposite. Injuries started uh, racking up, especially with his style. His style is actually very punishing to his own body. So I believe that Carlos has a little bit more potential if his head is in the game, and that's why I'm sticking with or picking Carlos Condit. Now, main event, and uh, I'm really excited for this. We are seeing Max Blessed Holloway take on Calvin Kadar, Kadar, Katar, Kadar. Oh, oh, just Kadar, Calvin Kadar. When I say it fast, it comes out. <laughs> I'm super excited for this fight. This fight gonna be good. I don't, uh, and I think it's actually quite even. And let's start start off with Calvin because he's the so-called up and comer. But as he says, he's actually older than Max Holloway. I believe he's 32, 33, and Max is 29. But you know, Max has been fighting professionally since he was six, so <laughs> he seems older, but he's not. Uh, former champ Max Holloway. I don't even think I said that. My bad. Uh, Calvin Kadar. He's gonna have the punching power, and he might be faster might be faster as far as his, his, his body movement his footwork i'm gonna have to see that once they get in there he might be faster and if so obviously use that to your advantage i think you're going to have i think you you might even be physically stronger they're at around the same size uh the same height um calvin has like a, a three inch reach advantage on the hands however it's max that it fights longer so i actually think that's going to nullify that i don't think we're going to really see that advantage there because of the way that max fights uh, max has like a two inch reach advantage on the legs again not quite sure that's going to be a big factor calvin if max decides he doesn't want to check your kicks chop 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 because take that steam off of him uh, uh take away that movement his range and we've seen that he will be hampered now he will bite down on that mouthpiece and still come forward anyway and fight through that but he won't be um as efficient he won't right so you can take advantage of that he won't be as mobile so you can bait him into bad movement you'll be quicker you can make those cuts things of that nature i actually think it's going to be calvin who's probably going to be bouncing around a little bit more and max is probably going to be walking him down i could be wrong about that but that's just kind of how i feel that's going to happen calvin so get in and out try to have a higher offensive 
offensive output because you already have a lower offensive output than he does. But again, you have more power. Measure your cardio. It's good, but I think Max's is better. So don't let the moment get to you. Don't let him. He does get a little cocky. Max, that is. Gets a little cocky inside the octagon. Talks a little smack. Don't let him get in there at all. Stay in character. Keep a cool head, which you're pretty good at doing. But again, you're going to have to measure your attack. Uh, if you see the opening, work towards your opening. Work a jab. Use your kicks as jab as well, especially if he's not protecting his leg. Um, you're going to have to really work to create your openings here and take a risk. Take a risk. Uh, this is, this is a huge opportunity for you. So I just think, um, I think you're going to be powerful, more powerful. And if you're faster with your, I think your movement will be more circular so you can get in and out, work those angles in and out, pick your point, uh, pick your shots, fight, bump, put together combinations when you jump, jump in and out, watch yourself when you disengage, make sure you're not getting caught on the, when you disengage and take them down to the ground. If you do get in trouble, you might be physically stronger. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, Max Holloway, you'll have a higher offensive output, but make it even higher. You can't let Calvin get comfortable. And he's the type that can get comfortable in the midst of a brawl where he's actually eating some shots, but he's doing, he's giving a little bit more. He can get comfortable like that. So you don't want it. You can't let him get comfortable. You're going to have to put together your long combinations and then move out. Uh, like I said, walk him down straight lines. because I think he's going to be bouncing around more. Check the kicks check the kicks he's more powerful don't take risks you like to brawl and all that don't do that don't fight him the way you fought dustin poirier someone else who had the power advantage on you who could kind of match you with the speed who was tearing apart that lead leg he wasn't checking the kicks you were too willing to engage with someone who has a power advantage got too comfortable you got too comfortable brawling because that's what you like to do don't fight Calvin the way you fought uh, Dustin Poirier. Fight your game. You be first. High uh, offensive, uh, offensive output. You got to control the center, which you're good at, but you have to initiate all the exchanges. It, everything has to be on your terms. If he does take you down to the ground, pop back up, unless you're seeing maybe you can see some uh, a submission there. You might be able to get something that he's not protecting quite well. Fill it out, but don't accept any sort of bad positioning up against the cage or on the ground. Disengage. Um, don't fight him the way you did, Dustin Poirier. Okay. <laughs> so hopefully the video is not too long. Please give me all your picks. This is a great event. This is a, 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 an amazing event. And the winner of this fight is probably going to get another title shot. Who did, did I pick? Oh, Max. <laughs> Um, for those of you who use my videos for betting purposes, this I actually do think this is kind of a toss-up. I, I do think Calvin has championship uh, potential, actually. That's why I said, Max, you, you got to be on your P's and Q's here. Don't fight him like you did, Dustin. But I am sticking with Max. Bless. Holloway. So give me all your picks and the injury updates. I'm super excited for this event. Give me a little synopsis on how this... How are you feeling as far as 2020, 2021? How are you going to get through it all? How are we going to get it through all together? Uh, lovely. Na, 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 na. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'm on Snapchat. <laughs> Talk to me. Take care. Goodbye.